this meeting to order. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the committee AM meeting. I'll look for any disclosures of pecuniary yeah, disclosures of pecuniary interest, if there are any. I see none. Okay, let's get started with infrastructure and development services. We've got one, two, three, four, five reports to receive and file. Looking for a motion to receive those. Councillor Miller, seconded by Councillor Marriott. Any discussion on any of those? Okay, all in favor of receiving those, that's carried. Any items in particular that anyone, would anyone like to discuss or pull out for any action? Nope. Okay, on to information reports. We have four there. I'll look for, did I just do this in all in one shot again? Yeah, okay. Look for a motion to uh, receive all four reports, please. Councillor Veen, Councillor Knapper, seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? Man, we're just flying by. Any uh, items anyone would like to pull out for discussion or any action? Oh. Okay, one report requiring a motion. That is the gateway sign selection report. We have a motion. Councillor, yes? Moved by uh, Warden and Weaver. I just wanted to make a comment on the uh, statistics, the activities and the, the planning. Uh, I think it's been a, a great year in the County of Lambton and I think this is, uh, you know, the staff puts all these reports together. Uh, I think they need to be commended and all the staff that had worked on the building statistics and uh, each of the municipalities that has the growth out there. So I think it's, uh, it's been a great year. It needs to be recognized with when we get these reports. Thank you for that. I actually was uh, appreciating them last night, I mentioned it to my wife and not so surprisingly, she was not enthused at all. However, I was pretty excited. So thank you to staff for these great reports. Uh, so we have a motion moved by uh, Warden Weaver. Uh, was there one particular, is that just the recommendation was uh, option three, as I recall? Or no, there are three options. Oh, just the, the actual uh, option three comprised of a sign with internally lit LED, etc. cetera. Okay. Uh, do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Miller? Any discussion on the sign? Yes, Councillor Bean. Okay, so we're all clear on which one that is. Any further discussion? All in favor? That's passed. Thank you. On to public health services. We've got one item to receive and file, letter from Gary McNamara. We have a motion to receive. Councillor Marriott, Councillor Veen seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you, that's carried. And we have five information reports. May I have a motion to receive all five, please? <coughs> Councillor Ferguson, Councillor Veen seconds. Any discussion? All in favor to receive those, that's carried. Are there any items that anyone would like to pull out for discussion? Council Bradley. Unless there's huge impact, it's, it's going to be annualized. Um, what's the status of this request we had out there for me with the two MPPs to discuss the changes to health things? It's been out there now for eight, nine months. And 
introduce some concrete evidence of the, uh, of the financial impact on the local ratepayers of, of, of the changes to the health funding. So I, I would direct, I guess, that to the clerk. If you had any response to that request. Mr. Tifo. Uh, comment to the extent that I can on that. The invitations were definitely uh, um, um, out there. We don't have a meeting with any MP scheduled at this point in time. What they've done is scheduled a uh, consultation in the meantime with, um, um, I forget his first name, Jim Pine, I believe his name is, which is scheduled for Windsor uh, come March 30th. And we figured that we'd meet on March 30th, assess where we are at that point in time, and perhaps reinvite the individuals um, once we've updated uh, council on that meeting. Sorry, I, I'm having a difficulty hearing um, hearing you. Could I ask that the two reports be sent through the warden to the uh, two FEPs indicating the impact on uh, Lampkin County taxpayers of their changes to the health unit? Okay, we'll uh, accept that as a motion. Do I have a seconder for that? Okay. Uh, he's indicating this is why we want to meet. There's a significant impact on the uh, local tax base by their changes to the health units. Okay. Yes, uh, if you wouldn't mind, sir. So there's a motion moved by Councillor Bradley that the, two, that the report that you see in uh, the package regarding the financial impact on public health is budget be sent to their two local MPPs for their uh, for their information. Okay, is that clear? So that's a motion by Councillor Bradley. Do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Bird, any discussion? All in favor? That's passed. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, actually, I do have a question. Uh, hopefully, it's a simple one on these electric kick scooters. Um, well, two questions. First off, uh, I don't believe there are any uh, municipalities that are buying into this as of this point in Lambton County. Is that correct? I know that uh, this legislation is new and effective in January, uh, where municipalities can consider this bylaw. I do have uh, in attendance the manager who may have a little bit more with respect to that question. Mike, is there anything else you can share? And uh, if, if so, if you want to find more, we can just bring him down to the... Through you, Mr. Chair, no, we're not aware of any municipalities uh, within Lambton who have taken advantage of this opportunity, but uh, public health staff are available to assist in any bylaw development, if so choose. Okay, one further question. Um, uh, in the conclusion, uh, it states that mandatory helmet use uh, for e-scooter riders of all ages could reduce head injuries, increasing the minimum age of use to 18 for riders can improve rider safety by increasing the number of riders understanding road rules. Are these rules that could be implemented at the municipal level or would this have to be lobbied back to the provincial government? Um, as, as far as I'm aware, there is uh, within the legislation that minimum age is 16 years old and then um, municipalities have discretion within uh, their bylaws to set rules and, uh, related to that. So that's my understanding. Thank you. Okay, anything else on the information reports? Council Ferguson? I'd like to ask, maybe you can't answer that. So when we get downloaded on the health care, do our provincial income taxes decrease or is it just a straight download and we pay the other taxes as before? That's a great question. Could we um, <laughs> perhaps pass that on to staff? <laughs> budget impacts report 
going back to that uh, question with the budget impacts report, look, my understanding is that this is just uh, straight provincial downloading um, of costs that were previously not paid by the local levy. But with respect to how that would um, reflect back to the local tax rate, I would have to turn that question to finance. So as far as the 2020 budget impact on uh, public health, uh, you'll be seeing the presentation in probably probably about an hour's time. Uh, but the cost shared programs that have gone from 75%, 25% to 70-30, it's approximately about a $400,000 impact or $369,000. Uh, we have several programs that are 100% funded by the province that they, those programs are now 70-30. And uh, that, that's close to about a half a million dollar impact. So when you combine those two, uh, those two impacts, it's approximately uh, $900,000, which is slightly over a percent impact on the county levy uh, this year, just as a result of the provincial downloading. Uh, kind of missing my point. Do we know if my provincial income tax decreases? They want to balance the books. But does my provincial income tax stay the same for them to balance, or do they decrease that, and then we are paying more on this end? I don't mind paying more if it's giving us more control, but I don't want to pay more or the same provincial and have an increase here at the same time. And I don't know if we can answer that here. It might be a question to send off or look up for later. Dan, the, the question correctly, um, you know, it's one taxpayer pocket. It's either provincial budget or, or the municipal budget. And, you know, I think it's f fairly clear that the, the province has some budgetary issues that they're trying to deal with, the, to deal with, whether it's health or education or, or so forth. So, you know, they're, I, I believe that they're, they're trying to get their budget in order to re reduce their costs, but some of the costs are being downloaded, such as in the public health service area, uh, onto the municipalities. And that's the challenge, I, I guess, across Ontario. Anything further on that? I'm not. I'm not sure. I heard the answer you were looking for in the sense that you're probably going to pay the same. Is my expectation, but I don't know. Any other, any other questions on these information reports? Okay. Did I already ask for? Uh, uh, I'll, I'll just ask again in case. All in favor? Of receiving those okay that's carried uh, any other business from public health okay moving on to cultural services we have one two information reports some stats a lot of stats may I have a motion to receive those two reports thank you I'll move those uh, Weaver. reports be received do we have a seconder for that? Councillor Miller, any questions? No? All in favor? Okay. And is there anything further from either of those reports that anyone would like to act upon? No. Okay, we have five reports requiring a motion, so we will do those individually. Uh, report A. A number of policies. May I receive a motion? Uh, Councillor Ferguson, Councillor Napper seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? That's passed. B, Libraries Donations Report from September 1st to December 31st, 2019. May I have a motion? Councillor Veen, Warden Weber seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? That's passed. And C, a number of uh, the, hours, or the hours of operations. May I have a motion on that? Councillor Marriott, Councillor Miller seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? That's passed. 
D, collections management and donation report. May I have a motion, please? Councillor Veen, Warden Weber, any discussion? All in favor. And the Canaterra Park log cabin relocation proposal. May I have a motion, please? Councillor Veen, Warden Weber, and I assume that's the recommendation uh, that's included. Any discussion? All in favor? That's passed. Any other business for cultural services? Sir? Yeah. If I may, thank you, Chair. Just um, wanted to update the group on something that we weren't able to get into the council package, but some good news. Um, pleased to report that the Lambton Heritage Museum was nominated as an Innovator of the Year Award finalist through the Ontario Southwest Tourism Corporation. And the winners for that award will be announced at their upcoming conference on March the 4th. The Innovation Award was based on the, the change in the concept and approach to museum, establishing a collection center there and giving full access to visitors to the 25,000 items that are in our care at that site, um, as well as the establishment of the one kilometer hiking trail around the property. Uh, that's full season. We facilitate snowshoes at that uh, location as well for the winter months and the off season and just a nice uh, sort of space for, for hiking around, around the site. So that push to animate the site and make it active for visitors was recognized by SWATSI and we hope to uh, be awarded but are honored to just be nominated for that innovation award and just uh, make this body aware. So congratulations to staff for their efforts. And congratulations to you, sir. Thank you for that. Any other other business? Okay. Moving on to Finance, Facilities, and Court Services Division. We have one information report regarding future capital needs and the provincial downloading pressures. You may have a motion to receive this report, please. Councillor Miller, I have a seconder. Councillor Veen, any discussion? Warden Weber. I just uh, like to make a comment. I'm glad to see this report. Uh, I believe it's very important uh, information here as we go forward with the budget process. Uh, the county has an uh, asset management plan. We have a lot of needs uh, locally, so I think it's uh, wise if we take uh, this report into consideration as we go into the budget process. We have a lot of future needs. Uh, locally, and I think it's a, I think it's a great report. Thank you for having that. Thank you for that. And I do have a question: Is this um, is this typical practice to be able to forecast these types of needs uh, this far in advance like this, or was this a special uh, occurrence? Because I agree with the warden that this was a very handy report to receive at this time. Through the chair, uh, several municipalities, as part of their best practices, will often forecast their future needs. Um, this was a, our, our best attempt, uh, basically trying to uh, take a look at what the, the, uh, the horizon looks like as far as our, our capital requirements, as well as some of the provincial downloading issues that we're dealing with. Uh, and, um, there's some key numbers in there that, from a, from a highlight point of view, anywhere between 2.8 million to six million dollars on on an annual basis, which could have a potential impact of three and a half percent to seven and a half percent over the uh, over the next three to four years. So it's uh, something that we want to highlight as a GM group and as your administration uh, as you go through budget deliberations, because uh, there's several several um, asks that are that are in front of you as well. Thank you. Any other discussion on that report? None. Okay, all in favor of receiving that. That's passed. Any other business? None? Okay. So do I make a declaration or do we receive a motion on this to go in camera? Okay, I'll need a motion to go in camera. Uh, Councillor Veen, Councillor Ferguson, all in favor? That's carried.
Okay, we're back live streaming. Um, and I was just told for our information, and I think we've all been having trouble hearing today, uh, that the, uh, the sound baffles will be installed next week in the chamber, which will help, because I think the biggest problem is the echo is interfering in the sound quality. So it's making very, it's, I thought it was just me. It's very difficult to hear up here, but I'm glad to know we're all equals in the struggle. <laughs> so um, for the uh, public record, we've just been uh, in camera to address the issues as uh, indicated in the agenda in item number seven. And with that, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Warden Weber, Councillor Veen seconds that. All in favor? Information on asset management planning and moving forward. Some of our reserves and reserve funds, and specifically their linkages to, uh, to asset management planning, debt overview and highlights, a capital grants overview, some future cost pressures, and basically our budget timetable. So what's guiding us from a budget perspective? Uh, fiscal responsibility is a key, key phrase, specifically investing wisely to continue building our county services while maintaining a solid financial position. So how do we do that? We promote affordable, competitive property taxes. We try to reduce our debt levels and costs. We promote pay-as-you-go financing. We contain costs where we can. We try to ensure adequate reserves and reserve funds. We invest strategically, and we manage our assets. And did you know that we've gone from an A rating in 1993 to double A stable credit rating in 2019? which indicates for me, a, as your treasurer, significant improvements from a financial health perspective. Um, I just want to reassure everyone that you know, our reserves and reserve funds may be low, and we want to increase them, but our debt le uh, levels are low as well, and our debt servicing costs are low. So it's, uh, it's a credit to your administration and your previous county councils where you've done good work and you've improved your financial health. So I think that's very, very important to know. Budget focus, a little bit of a budget refresher. Expenditures minus non-property tax revenues is basically equals your net budget of your tax levy. In Lambton County, we have approximately about $220 million worth of, of gross expenditures. When you take a look at non-property tax revenues, and by non-property tax revenues, I mean government grants and subsidies, your user fees. Your, uh, the debt that you may be utilizing for some of your capital programs, your, your uh, OSIF finance, and your federal gas t tax rebate, that all comes into account in what you require in levy. And we, you'll see that basically in this year's levy, it's about $80.2 million that you will require. How do you raise that, that money? It can come from assessment growth, as basically you get more businesses and residents that come in within the county, or it can come from a tax rate increase. So when I take a look at your 2020 net tax impact budget overview, and I look at the operating budget that was required across all divisions, $62.2 million was required from your levy in order to fund your operations across all divisions. You required $14.5 million to basically fund your capital plan from levy. And I mean your tangible capital assets and your non-tangible capital assets. Just the definition, the tangible capital asset is basically your construction, your roadworks, it's the hard capital. Where your non-tangible capital assets is primarily your reserves and your reserve funds, your contributions to reserves. Required 14.5 million last year. In total, $76.7 million in levy was required. So where are we at in 2020? $65.2 million in levies required for our operating budget across all divisions, or $3 million more. I want to clearly state that $3 million, approximately 1.37% of our increase this, this year is due to provincial downloading. Approximately half of that $3 million relates to costs that, such, uh, that we're incurring for, for public health and our court services and as well as long-term care. When you take a look at our capital budget, it's $15 million that we require in 2020, or half a million dollars more in levy. So we require $80.2 million in levy 
which equates to a three and a half million dollar increase. And as I stated in the previous slide, because we've achieved 1.05% in assessment growth, and I want to note that that's the highest that we've seen in the last five years, which is significant improvements in, in our growth, we require a rate increase or recommending a rate increase of 3.42%. Just some uh, quick stats, a 1% rate increase is approximately $767,451. So if your costs go down by that amount or your revenues go down by that, or go up by that amount, you could have a 1% reduction in, in, in your levy. All figures on this chart are subject to rounding as well. Uh, now the county, county Lambton budget highlights. Someone asked me why is the County Lambton draft budget increasing 3.42%? I can summarize it in three points. Basically our base budget increase, all divisions, operating capital, 1.3% of the increase is related to our base budget for operating capital across all divisions, which is significantly lower than, than the 1.9% in CPI that we're, we looked at in Ontario in, in December. Provincial downloading, as I had mentioned, when you look at public health, court security, and long-term care, 1.37% of the increase relates to that component. And we when we take a look at our investment in our inner, inner, uh, infrastructure, and by that I mean our continued and planned increase in our amortization reserve that basically started 10 years ago, and each year you, you've, uh, you've increased that reserve in order to fight your infrastructure deficit or reduce the infrastructure deficit. As well, we have an enhanced investment in this year's budget as a result of a new, uh, new opportunity or new, new events, uh, for example, Lampton Shared Services Center and leasehold improvements. So there's a 1.8% increase there. 4.47%, less the assessment growth of 1.05, tax levy increase, tax rates of 3.42. So how do we get there? Uh, it didn't happen overnight. There's a lot of hard work that's been done where we've reduced personnel costs. For example, in public health, they've reorganized and contained their workforce. Um, same thing with it in finance and in corporate services. We've tried to basically achieve cost savings and personnel costs. We've got positions as well where we took a waiting period to fill vacancies. And in this year's uh, report, you'll see that there's another four FTE reductions that we have as part of attrition management. We've created service efficiencies and rationalized services and alternate service delivery. There, we, we renegotiated contracts, for example, in the, in, in the IT area, your whole telephone system. So just an example, basically, where we tried to contain our costs. We looked at LED, at LED lighting and by looking at energy conservation measures that we can do. When we looked at our capital budget, there were cuts and deferrals that we made. We, 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 at the Lambton County, you utilize this project scoring guide uh, where if there was a project that didn't meet a certain criteria, we either cut the, cut the capital or deferred it to, to a future period. You also utilize reserve funds strategically to mitigate or phase in tax rate increases. Last year, you uh, upped your contribution to the amortization reserve to $4.1 million. And by doing that, you have, we've basically been able to reduce the levy requirement from capital this year because you have a higher increase reserve fund. So you basically, you're mitigating, your fi you're phasing in your tax rate increases. These all, we've also taken under a value for money audits where we've looked at consultants uh, for harmonized sales tax and uh, try to ma maximize our, our rebates. We, we've utilized consultants in our engineering area uh, to, to, to get some better pricing on some of our, our road work type projects. So on provincial downloading, we talked a little about this about at, at the AM meeting. What's happening in provincial downloading is in the, on the public health service sector, the cost shared programs that were originally funded 75% by the province, 25% by the municipality, are now being cost shared 70-30 which means that we have a greater cost to bear in 2020, or $369,000 more, which is approximately 0.5% on the levy. We also had 100% funded programs that are now funded 70-30, and there's a $538,000 impact there. So the total public health impact is $907,000. 
We also had, and you've seen these in reports in our monitoring reports throughout 2019, where we've, we've lost some grant revenue uh, regarding court security, $110,000. When you take a look at long-term care, there's structural compliance funding for Lambton Meadow Villa, Villa that expires March 31st. There's about another $100,000 impact there. And I just wanted to point out that those are the three components of provincial downloading, but there's also some, some subtle ones as well. Uh, we know, like, for example, in Ontario Works, our cost of admin subsidy has been frozen since uh, 2018. And we continue as, uh, in our uh, corporate services areas, such as in legal, in finance, um, human resources. There are, those are costs that we're basically putting to, uh, providing to Ontario Works at really, really no cost because we're not getting any, any subsidy for, for that. Investment in infrastructure, for example, I talked about the planned increase the amortization reserve, Council's long-established program funding for the replacement of existing assets, $652,000 is in this year's budget, or 0.8%. And the, I enhanced the increase the opportunities in contingency reserve, re our recommendation as a result of, uh, we have leasehold improvements, a new cap of $3.8 million that we're projecting, and uh, w with new, this new works, we, we know that we're, we have some costs that we didn't anticipate last year. So there's $740,000 in there. So asset management planning, like I had mentioned, uh, you know, our previous treasurer uh, did some good work in 2011, laid out a plan for you. You're in the ninth year of that plan, where we've uh, funds to be raised in this year's budget are $4.8 million or $652,000. I wanted to basically talk a little bit about that plan was that it was clear in the report that was done in 2011 that because we never went to $5.52 million right away, there's an accumulated unfunded deficit that will continue to increase. The second issue that was included in that report was that there was inflation that was not included as far as your cost estimates. So the funding requirement based on historical costs will not generate all funds required to place these as uh, our assets at current prices. So we've done good work where we've improved it, but these are just a, you know, a couple little things that we know uh, we, we were not addressing. And because of that, the county, we still believe we still have a significant infrastructure backlog to address. And during 2020 and 2021, uh, I, can, I can tell you, uh, you know, one of my first objectives is to take a look at your asset management plan and to come back uh, to County Council with um, a report back on our updated 10-year asset management plan that reflects some of our long-term cap capital planning needs per division based on the asset portfolio of the division, some targeted reserve fund levels per asset category. If you have a new building, you don't really need that much money in your reserve fund. But if you have a building that's basically very, very old, it'd be nice to have about 25% in, in a reserve to, re to replace or rehabilitate that building. And some, some buildings you have that are, in, that are in between. Our net replacement value per asset category, some of the resourcing requirements for effective asset management planning. Uh, there's a lot of municipalities, that, you know, we need the, the right resources to ensure that we have the right plan in place. And inflation estimates that are built into your long-term uh, capital plan. Reserves and reserve funds, why are they critical? Well, they're critical to pay bills to cover our liabilities and emergencies, for effective asset management, we need to ensure our funds are available to renew or replace our assets, to make investments. What happens without reserves and reserve funds? I often get the question, why do we need reserves and reserve funds? Well, costs will increase because you'll, you'll, you'll need to basically utilize debt, for example. Uh, assets will more likely be replaced earlier. You have larger contingency budgets as, as you budget. Your AA sta uh, stable credit rating could be in, potentially be in jeopardy. It's clear in the reports that uh, you know, our reserve funds, they know are low, and they'd like to see them increase in order to improve that rating. There could be a reduction in capital works and investments, loss of flexibility to take advantage of opportunities. Oftentimes, when there's a stimulus program, uh, you know, if you need some, some financing, you can utilize your reserves and your reserve funds. And you could have liquidity problems for example, a second tax, tax levy increase, which no one really wants. So when we take a look at our reserves and reserve funds, our, our balances, there was a report that we brought over in, in January this year, which basically stated our balance in 
January 1st, 2019 was $44.6 million. The balance by the end of 2019 was 49.2. We plan on contributing this year $12.1 million, including this 2020 budget, but we're planning drawdowns of $11.7 million. So our balance is increasing slightly, $49.6 million. So again, to reassure you that uh, we are maintaining our reserve fund levels, uh, they're relatively stable and once one could say they're, they're increasing slightly. Our debt overview, when we take a look at debt, debt servicing charges in this year's budget are $5.2 million, which is just again, lower than, than the amount that was required last year as far as debt servicing costs in the budget. Our debt level issued and authorized is approximately 18.5. So when we take a look at our maximum limits, and these are basically formulas that are provided by the province and they relate to 25% of our own source revenues, uh, the maximum debt charge that we, we could potentially go to as a county, and I'm not advocating that you go there, but it's about $18.9 million. And the potential debt limit or the debt level is $70 million uh, based on the way we issue our debt, which is pro prox uh, uh, at five year, five year levels. So debt levels for 2020 will remain well below our thresholds, just uh, to put things in perspective. Projects funded by debt in 2020 is general information. Uh, there's the Oil Museum Building Sustainability Project, there's an IT Corporate Refresh Project, and there's infrastructure improvements in bridge and culvert rehabilitation. Council grants, uh, this is basically a, a policy that you've adopted back in 2008. There's about three requests that we've seen uh, that were presented to us on, on the 5th of February. Town of Petrolia for 200,000, Kiwanis for 75,000, Blue Water Health uh, for a million dollars in 2020 over a 10 year period. It's about a $10 million request. At our last uh, meet, committee meeting, we, we were asked to, for a report on how that would potentially divvy up across municipalities and as you can see, the million dollars, the, 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 the biggest share of the city of Sarnia, $488,000, followed by the township of St. Clair at $130,000, uh, and Lampton shares, Shores is at $137,000. Uh, just uh, the second column basically provides you what the 10-year uh, contribution would be for, for Blue Water Health. So in our binders today, you have information reports that would be helpful as you deliberate the budget. There's the attrition management update report. There's Lampton Public Health. There's a couple reports on social services regarding Ontario Works, uh, their draft budget impacts, the trends and economic indicators. Uh, there's an important report, the future capital needs and provincial downloading pressures report that we looked at at the AM meeting this morning, as well as it's there in the PM meeting. Big issue is there, there is that uh, Probably this is the first year that we, we know that there's significant costs that, that are coming forward and we wanted to highlight those for you. Um, and uh, there's also, I included the uh, funding of amortization expense report that was re provided back in 2011 just as a, just as a re refresher as to what our, what our intent was as far as uh, asset management planning. So. Budget highlights, some of some very positive things. Our operating costs for 2020 across all our divisions are below the rate of inflation. Assessment growth is up. Highest rate has been in the last five years. Reserve fund, reserve fund levels are increasing as we continue our commitment to redu uh, reduce our infrastructure deficit. The overall debt le low for the county is low. Our attrition management report shows a reduction of 4 FTE. 1.37% of that 3.42% increase is strictly due to, to uh, provincial downloading. And our capital budget, tangible, continues to be strong and increasing with less requirement uh, from our, our tax level. Our budget timetable, I often state that I, I think I live every day in budget. We started this budget process in April to October. All divisions worked diligently on their operating capital budget. We did more, more detailed reviews from November 1st to January 31st. You've received your capital presentations um, at County Council on the 5th. We're releasing the budget on the 19th of February today, and we look forward to uh, the review of the draft budget, which is on March 4th, 
and we have a March 26th date if necessary. On that note, um, if there's any additional information or answers to any questions on Lampia County budget, uh, I'd be more than happy to, um, to respond to, to any queries. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pellicero, for your uh, presentation. Are there any uh, questions? We'll be dealing with the budget on uh, March the 4th. Councillor Boucher, you had a question? In regard to the Blue Water Health Foundation request, uh, I'm only a question. I think the discussion takes place at, at the next meeting, whatever. Um, I indicated to them that I wasn't sold on the idea that they came down to ask for that kind of money. Uh, after we we just finished paying, I think five million dollars. The last payment was last time. Uh, they they claim they want to purchase capital equipment. Um, this is not part of building a hospital. They buy something inside the the hospital. How could it be a capital? Funding is this? Uh, can it be a capital? I, I'm trying to argue against it, but I think two, ten million dollars a lot of money for me to accept, and I would be voting against that ten dollar. I just want to know if 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 it's if purchasing of capital equipment inside the hospital is justified to ask for the money. Is it part of the capital budget? I mean, <clears throat> so if I understand correctly, the question is, um, does Blue Water Health ask, it's $10 million ask, um, is it justified based on their capital uh, equipment need? And, and, and that's really difficult for us to answer. That's really an answer, a question for Blue Water Health um, uh, to address. But in terms of our policy or grant policy, uh, the county does uh, have a grant policy. The grant policy speaks to what's eligible, what's not eligible, and typically what's not eligible is operating expenses. And Blue Water Health is ask is not for operating expenses, but rather for capital equipment. <clears throat> in Blue Water Health's world, uh, they do go out and raise funds uh, from the community through its foundation for its capital equipment needs and that's typically the work that uh, uh, the Blue Water Health Foundation would do and of course I think you, you'd have to see the Blue Water Health uh, request really coming from uh, the foundation because typically it's the foundation's work to raise funds from the community for equipment such as MRI machines, scanning machines or whatever else that they need in terms of their, their capital equipment. But in terms of their ask versus their needs, that's a question that's best posed to Blue Water Health. Councillor Stark. Yes, following up on that question, because that is a concern of mine as well, are we apprised of the effectiveness of the Blue Water Foundation in terms of their fundraising efforts? Because as I recall in the presentation, there was no component that talked about uh, the contribution from the Blue Water Foundation as it related to the, the ask of the million dollars a year. Uh, has there been further information or is that forthcoming? Uh, because I, similar to uh, Councillor Bushi, I have a very difficult time understanding how we can be funding uh, equipment requests when in fact, typically, that is Blue Water Foundation's mandate. So you're correct. It is Blue Water Health's foundation to raise funds for uh, equipment for the hospital, and they do that. In terms of the information that's presented to this council, the information that we have and the information that we were uh, we, we were um, essentially promised, given, is what you've received already in terms of the presentation. In terms of the effectiveness of Blue Water Health Foundation raising funds for Blue Water Health, the hospital, um, I believe that information is all available publicly on, on uh, their website. 
but in terms of additional information for their uh, ask before this council, we've received what we expect uh, to receive from them. If the funds were granted by uh, this council, we typically then, from a back end perspective, enter into a council or a grant agreement, and the grant agreement would dictate that those funds uh, would be solely and exclusively used only for capital equipment and subject to auditing rights by, uh, by the county. But once the grant is, is, is given, it's given effectively only on those conditions. Any more questions for clarification? Councillor Loosley? Yeah, through you, Mr. Warden, just a clarification, and I'm not sure, maybe most of the county councils are aware of this. At one time, we were contributing money to the Strathroy Hospital. Was that a one-time thing, or is that an ongoing expense? I, I think it's ongoing. It's a good question. I think the ask for was for a million dollars two years ago. Perhaps Councillor Broad has got a little bit more context or insight, but I believe it was a one-time shot, if I recall correctly. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Councillor Arnold. Thank you, Warden Weber. I appreciate all the information, Larry. It's a great presentation piece, and it really lays out where the dollars and cents have to go and where they're coming from and all the rest. But I had two questions for you. First one, does this budget contain any one times that we're going to have to plan for for next year? And uh, the next question I have, the other question is, for our next meeting, or for the time when we're looking at this budget, could we get a little chart on the tax rate comparators, or comparisons with the number of our neighbors around here, whether it be Windsor, Strathroy, London, Chatham, Kent, to name a few, and also any restrictions that are on us at this time for the uh, different tax rates that we have to implement. And maybe we could uh, have just a little subset of a report for our budget session, if that's all right. Uh, through the chair, uh, absolutely, as far as the information report on the tax rate comparators, we, we can uh, pro definitely provide something uh, for our, our March 4th meeting. Uh, as far as the, the, fir the first request, quest, uh, any one-time items, generally speaking, when you're talking about an operating budget, you should not be including one-time items in your base budget. Um, there are there are some particular cases where that may happen, and you got to look at those by you know, on a case by case situation. But one time costs are o normally offset by one time revenues. Okay. With that, uh, Councillor Lucy, you have something. Yeah, through you again, Mr. Warren. Just uh, again, I don't need an answer right at this time, but I'm thinking about some of this provincial downloading. I'm hoping administration has looked, for example, in the public health area if we really need some of these programs and if they've really uh, evaluated those uh, uh, because of the cut from the province. Thank you. Okay. So noted. Um, I understand some of the programs that were funded at 100% and then reduced to 75% were, were made mandatory. So uh, we're, we're kind of locked into them, uh, public health. But, um, with that, I guess I, I'd like to thank all the general managers, all the staff that have worked together on putting this together. Uh, we have lots to discuss. Uh, you have a large binder to go home and, and read through. And I would uh, uh, commit an offer that uh, any questions you have between now and the budget time uh, I'm sure staff would appreciate uh, the question ahead of time so they can be properly prepared at the budget meeting. If, if you have questions or concerns, uh, please get a hold of the general manager or the treasurer and, and have, that, uh, have that discussion. Uh, maybe there's clarification that needs to be made or if you have a suggestion, but uh, the budget process will go much smoother if staff is prepared uh, and we're ready to uh, go on March the 4th. With that, uh, thank you all. We'll adjourn this meeting and resume our PM committee.